Hey everybody, welcome to Life is Brutal. I'm Anthony, and today we're going to be doing an episode of Legends of Beer. Legends of Beer is the segment of my channel where we go through and we talk about some of the most iconic, the most revolutionary, the most legendary people in the beer and brewing world throughout history who deserve to achieve that legendary status. Now, when I first started this segment, what I really wanted to do was talk about those we should emulate, those we should aspire to be in the beer world. Unfortunately, not all legends are a positive thing. Many legends are there to warn you. And that's what this episode is going to be about. We are going to talk about one of the most destructive forces in the beer and brewing world. Today we're going to talk about the infamous craft beer con man, Stephen Foster. <laughs> Since 2007, breweries around the globe have been getting swindled and conned to the point of closure by one shadowy figure named Stephen Foster. The closest thing I can compare Stephen Foster to is Frank Abagnale of Catch Me If You Can fame depicted by Leonardo DiCaprio. Frank Abagnale was such a slick, smooth-talking con man that he was able to weasel his way into professions that required immense amount of training and dedication to master. And he became a pilot, he became a doctor, he, I mean, so many things that he was able to just lie his way into and succeed at. Now, that's also the difference between Frank Abagnale and Stephen Foster, where Abagnale was so successful and only got caught because of a couple of prying eyes. Stephen Foster just sucks. His complete inability to be successful is almost legendary in and of itself, but that's that's what makes this story so great. At first glance, Stephen Foster looks like the prime candidate for any brewery's head brewer position. On paper, he is amazing. He graduated from the Bianstefaner Brewing Academy in Bavaria, Germany. Additionally, he graduated from the Seibel Brewing Institute in Chicago. Now, either one of these graduations and credits to your name make you a prime candidate for hiring. You know, any brewery would love to have a brewer that is so well educated and has so much experience under their belt. So to have both, I mean, that's like striking gold. Using these degrees as the cornerstone of his eligibility, Stephen Foster was able to obtain a head brewer's position in both the Dominican Republic and in Puerto Rico. Here is where he would attain his first head brewer positions and pad out his resume with a little exotic flair. Between 2007 and 2008, Stephen Foster decided he wanted to move to America. That way he could practice his head brewership in the heartland of the craft beer revolution. His first head brewer's position was at the Bowling Green Brewing Company in Kentucky. The problems with Stephen Foster began immediately. Consistently, he would release very spoiled, tainted, and infected batches of beer. Stephen Foster would go out of his way to convince and argue with the owners of the brewery that beer should be unpasteurized. He said that all the best breweries in Europe would produce completely unpasteurized beers for their sales, and that was the right way to do it. However, when you mix that with Kentucky's strange beer laws, it creates a little bit of a problem. The problem is, Kentucky state law demands that all beers that have been shipped to the retailer, stay in storage for around three to five days to ensure stability. Now, once it got there, there's no law or regulation demanding that they stay in a refrigerated area. This would basically ensure that all the beers sent out from the Bowling Green Brewing Company that were unpasteurized would turn into a petri dish full of bacteria, mold, and wild yeasts. The amount of money wasted on just bad batches, infected batches, all the money wasted sending it out to retailing after packaging and then to be returned from unsatisfied customers or just absolutely be undrinkable or unservable by the staff. It was a huge financial burden on such a fledgling brewery. And in a very short amount of time, one year after opening, the company folded and Stephen Foster was back out on the loose. 
Trying to stay away from headlines, trying to keep his name from being tainted, he moved to South Africa, where he was able to gain simultaneous employment at two different breweries. Neither brewery knew that he was working for the either one, and they both had a non-compete clause saying that he couldn't brew at any other brewing establishment after his tenure there that would be able to compete against their own interests. So imagine how mad they were when they both found out that he was working for their local rival. To avoid confrontation, Stephen Foster just disappeared in the middle of the night, leaving batches and batches of unfinished beer in both breweries' storage facilities, which, to be fair, probably would have had him been thrown out anyway because of his bad brewing practices. To add to the financial burden, when Stephen Foster left, he took with him large lump sums of money from both breweries that they had given him for travel expenditures, relocation, and signing bonuses. Luckily, both of these breweries were able to stay afloat, but they were very, very lucky to have survived the absolute human hurricane that Stephen Foster is. It's also interesting to note that this is where he really established his MO. He would just dip out, just disappear, as soon as he caught wind that there might be a little bit of trouble coming his way. That way he couldn't be fired, that way he couldn't leave any real traces behind, and he would just disappear into the night with all the money, leaving all the burden on those who trusted him to lead their brewery in a positive direction. In 2011, Stephen Foster decided to move back to the States where he got employment as the head brewer at Nimbus Brewing Company in Tucson, Arizona. However, there seemed to be a lot of questions being asked about his actual credentials, and again, he disappeared, reappearing in Indiana that same year to work for the Four Horsemen Brewing. But after only six months, people started looking into him again because, again, he was releasing spoiled batches unsellable beers, infecting equipment, just ruining their entire operation, causing the company to hemorrhage money. The owners of Four Horsemen Brewing decided that they weren't going to just be walked on, they weren't going to be taken advantage of. So they actually hired a private investigator to do a background check on Stephen Foster, and the results were surprising. The background check revealed that not only had Stephen Foster not graduated from the Van Stefaner Brewing Institute in Bavaria, but there was no evidence of him ever attending. Same thing for the Seibel Institute of Brewing in Chicago. So the two major things that made him such a catch were completely falsified. The owners of Four Horsemen Brewing took all this information from the background investigation and they confronted Stephen Foster during one of his work days. Stephen flew into a rage. He claimed that his fellow assistant brewers and other employees and staff were conspiring against him purposely tainting his beer, that way he would be fired or be forced to resign and that way they could move up within the company. He stormed out of the building and disappeared into the night once again. Several years following was rather quiet for Stephen. As far as we were able to tell, there's no real evidence showing that he was working at any brewery or any head brewer's position, but that's still kind of unknown. He didn't return to the spotlight until several years later in around 2013. He showed up in Tennessee and was looking for investors to invest in a brewery for him to open up himself. Because of his falsified credentials, he actually was able to raise a lot of money from a bunch of different independent investors. And he actually did pretty successfully and was starting to get all the processes moving, but because of his own incompetence and just coming ever so shy of reaching his financial goal, the plan kind of fell through. Now, although his own personal brewery did fall through and it didn't work out, he still made some very good connections during this process. He was hired by a fellow Tennessee brewery known as the Knoxville Sawworks. He was hired as a consultant to be able to oversee the development of their brewing expansion facilities as well as the development of their packaging and canning line processes. He made great friends with the owners of the brewery and after a little bit of time, actually was able to move into the head brewer's position at their main production facility. At the same time, he also was able to get the head teaching position at a local brewing college. Surprisingly, things were going great for Sawworks, and a lot of his students went on to be pretty successful brewers of their own after graduating from his class. So it seemed like things were actually looking good for him. But he has a bit of a Midas touch to him. Except where Midas touched things and turned it into gold, Stephen Foster turned things into shit. <laughs> and this was no exception. After getting the head brewer's position at Sawworks, batches instantly started turning to undrinkable 
unservable, unreleasable messes. Foster tried to blame these shortcomings on his brewing assistant, but Sawworks was pretty familiar with the assistant, and if it wasn't for all of Foster's fake credentials, it was likely that he was going to be the one to take the head brewer's position. They had so much trust and faith in the abilities of this assistant that they chose to believe him over Foster. As far as we're able to tell, the split between Foster and Sawworks was amicable and he disappeared into the night once again. Over the next few years, Stephen Foster would pop up at one location or another all over the country as a head brewer and then disappear and repeat and repeat, rinse and wash and repeat and just kept doing it, leaving a trail of breweries that would shudder, leaving tons and tons, probably I mean, I don't have an exact number, but it has to be thousands of gallons of wasted, bad beer in his wake. His last victim, or I should say latest victim, was back in Kentucky in 2017. Stephen Foster had convinced a small farming couple that they should open up a farm brewery on their land known as the St. Arnulf Alert. That couple took a huge chunk of their own savings and invested so much of their own money into opening this because they believed in him and they believed in Steven's credentials. Additionally, Beer Boom was still going strong, so it seemed like it was the perfect business investment. Unfortunately, as you've learned, Stephen Foster is really good at pulling wool over people's eyes. And after all this, the beer was still subpar. As soon as St. Arnulf Alert opened, customers were complaining about bad beer, infections, just absolute undrinkable messes coming from the new fledgling brewery, which in the beginning days, that's a death knell. Despite this, the delusional Stephen Foster kept taking money from them to convince them that they needed to expand and open up new avenues of money instead of hitting the local scene, start distributing. This couple who had spent so much time and money were keen on the idea, but decided that after hearing all the feedback that they needed to take time to consider this. They weren't going to give in to Stephen Foster's demands immediately, so they said that they were going to come talk to him in a few days. And when they came to his on-premise house, which they had pretty much allowed him to stay in for free, they discovered that all of his possessions were gone and the house was completely empty. He had disappeared once again. Unfortunately, this is where Stephen Foster's trail runs cold. We currently do not know where he is, where he's working, what he's doing, nothing. He just disappeared, evaporated into thin air after swindling and ruining so many lives. There are some rumors that say he's moved to Illinois to open up another brewery or work with the brewing industry out there, but those are very unverified claims. More interesting is that there are some internet investigators on Facebook, Reddit, and a couple other places that have been putting together Stephen Foster's puzzle and learned that he had actually been going under a few different aliases over the years. And that is incredibly likely that out in Illinois, he is operating under a completely different name. Now that's all speculation, of course, and as much as I would love to find out where he is, only God knows really. But what is known is that over a 10 year period, he completely ruined 12 different breweries and tainted or financially burdened many more. Unfortunately, not a single victim of Stephen Foster's has gotten any type of compensation or refund or justice, really. He just came in, swindled them, took everything from them, and then left. If you have any details on Stephen Foster or any of the pseudo names he goes by, let somebody know. Reach out. Reach out to me, and I will pass that information along, and I will... It would just be so satisfactory to be able to get this worthless piece of human scum and bring him to justice. I said this in the beginning of the video, that some legends are meant to be warnings. And the tell of Stephen Foster is exactly that. It's a warning for those who want to be in craft beer, who want to open up a brewery, or, or are a fledgling, low, small brewery who are in desperate need to hire a new head brewer. If something looks too good to be true, it likely isn't. If your financial future or your hopes and dreams of opening and running a business rely on someone else's shoulders and their ability to do the work that they say they can do, 
you need to be able to go through, verify, and get references and ensure 100% without a shadow of a doubt that they are capable of what they are. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was a whirlwind trying to go through and do all the research and find out all the craziness behind this story. So I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you liked it. Now, I did have to severely condense down this story because it's decades long and there's so much going on that for it to be comprehensible in any way had to be really, really condensed down. Some of the tales from these individual breweries that Stephen Foster worked at are so devastatingly sad. It's tragic, honestly. And if you are interested in the future, I might go back and look into some of these specific events and tell the full story. That way you get a real glimpse at just how awful he was. He was really playing with people's hopes and dreams, and it's so sad. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed. Remember, there is a story in every bottle, and that life is beautiful. Cheers, my friends.